All right, so thank you for coming to the talk. This is building mentoring into an open source community that welcomes and values new contributors. Uh, this talk is available if you want to look at it on your own devices or you want to check it out later um, as a reveal repo uh, at the URL bit.ly slash integrate dash mentoring. Um, I'm Kathy Thays. Uh, this is my first time to Open Source Bridge and I'm um, super impressed, having a good time so far and I will be having a much better time tomorrow because my talk will be all done. Um, I am YesCT on the internet um, and I work for a company uh, called Blackmesh which does um, supported uh, managed hosting and 65% uh, of their websites that they host are Drupal websites. And I'm involved uh, with Drupal. And Drupal is an open source content management uh, program. I work on Drupal 8, which is the uh, version that's currently under development. Uh, we are in the final phase of trying to get it released. We wanted to get it down to zero criticals, and then we'll have Drupal 8, and it'll be awesome. Uh, but I started a long time ago with Drupal, uh, with Drupal 6. And I was volunteering to build sites for nonprofits that I cared about. Um, and I would go to their meetings, and you know, they'd be like telling me all about their activities and stuff. And I'd be like, great, what's your website? And they'd be like, we don't have one. And I'd be like, what the freaking heck? Um, so then I would make them a website. Uh, and I used Drupal to do that. And that was my first experience uh, using Drupal. And over the years, I've collected quite a few old Drupal 6 sites for nonprofits that I still kind of maintain for free. Um, that was nine years ago, though. So, like, you know, not everybody had a website back then. Um, when I was building these things, um, I didn't do web development for my job. I was a computer science instructor at university for a while, and then I was a dog trainer. Um, uh, but I would have problems with Drupal, and I would look them, like, try and find the solutions, and so I would find tickets that somebody else had already opened, and then I would either, like, um, verify that the problem existed, or I would try out the solution that was posted there, and I'd make a comment and be like, yes, this works for me, or these are the additional steps to reproduce. Uh, and I did that for a while, but then the more sites that I built, the more complicated ones that I used, I would find problems that weren't, uh, didn't have already existing issues. So then I was making my own issues, but I didn't have any Drupal expertise, so I didn't solve the problems myself, but I really wanted them solved. So I thought, well, okay, what I'll do is I'll look at the work that the other people who know how to solve these problems need to do, I'll do that work for them, and then they'll have more time to solve my problems. And I don't know if that was like a particularly good strategy, but it was my strategy. So then I started like going through issue queues for um, like contrib projects and stuff that I needed for my um, whatever site I was building at the time, and I would like totally triage their issue queue. I would like mark duplicates, and I would respond and be like, we need steps to reproduce, and like I would tag things, and like, um, I did learn to ask permission first before doing that to somebody else's issue queue. Uh, but it meant that I was like a little bit loud in the issue queues, but the maintainers really appreciated it uh, because they didn't have to do the boring work that I was doing for them and they could solve the problems. Uh, and that worked out pretty well for a while. Um, so I was still doing this like on the side, volunteering, and in Drupal, we have uh, IRC channels on Freenode that we use to chat. And one of them is just pound Drupal. And you can go in there and you can talk about anything. Uh, and there's also pound Drupal dash support, which I used a lot because I had a lot of support questions because I didn't know how to do anything in Drupal. Um, so I was already hanging out um, in these channels. I was trying to get my problem solved in the issue queue for these projects that I was working on. And around that time, um, a, a core mentoring program started in IRC. And it was called Core Office Hours. And uh, it was for two hour chunks twice a week in the Pound Drupal channel that I was already in for other reasons. And it just started like showing up every now and then. And 
and I was paying attention a little bit, and then I got involved. There were some really cool people um, there, and you know, I wanted to interact with the cool people, so I started doing that. Um, I was getting more and more into Drupal, and um, <coughs> uh, so I was also listening to podcasts, and uh, I love podcasts, I still love them. And I was listening to the Lullabot podcast, and um, they used to have these really long podcasts where they would laugh a lot. And, uh, and they were super fun to listen to. And they would do like, they would talk about upcoming events uh, and what was going on. And they would talk about um, Drupal conferences. And they would mention like, hey, there's these extra days which are not on the schedule. You people out there you know, that are listening to the podcast, you should go to them. And eventually I was like, well, maybe they know what they're talking about. And I'll go to one of them. So uh, I went to DrupalCon Denver in 2012 and arranged to stay some extra days afterwards, even though it wasn't on the schedule and I was like, oh well, I guess if there's nothing to do, I'll, I don't know. I had no idea what I was gonna do. I was really hoping that I would find this and everything would be fine. Um, so I had found myself in these IRC mentoring office hours and then I ended up at DrupalCon for the sprint days where there was also official mentoring events. Uh, and that's how I got involved with, um, with the mentoring program. Uh, now, um, my job for Black Mesh is to work on Drupal 8 because, I mean, that was 2012 when I started. And um, I started working on Core a lot. So I guess three years later. Um, for Drupal 8, I've worked on a lot of multilingual things, uh, content translation, config translation, uh, a little bit of menu links. Um, the last sprint I was at was on some Twig safe markup stuff, which was like kind of theming, kind of security. Like I learned a lot about that. Um, but between Denver and now, I have been participating in IRC mentoring and a mentoring events at cons at every big Drupal event except for like Sydney, which I didn't get to go to. Um, so I have a lot of experience uh, with those. Um, the last one was at DrupalCon Los Angeles. Um, the whole entire DrupalCon was 3,000-ish people. On the sprint day, we had 400, and I was kind of sort of in charge with some other people of the sprint day, and we had about 60 mentors uh, there to help with that. Um, and I've done big events and also small little events. So I also have um, a local meetup that I run uh, in Oak Park, Illinois. Uh, and we average four to five people at our meetup where we have a sprint. So I do some big ones and I do some little ones. Okay, so the talk is um, building mentoring into an open source community that welcomes and values new contributors. We're gonna use Drupal as an example, but I fully expect that these things will apply widely to other projects. Um, the Drupal project and the Drupal community as we call it, is really good at getting new contributors to actually accomplish something. Uh, and it's a key part of the long-term uh, success uh, and health of our community. So a long time ago, uh, Drupal 7 was released early in 2011, uh, and Drupal 8 opened for development right away. Uh, we're not doing that anymore. Um, but at that time, that's what happened. Uh, and then a couple months later, uh, in the summer, uh, XJM um, with Catch and a few other people said, you know what, let's have these office hours. And so they started these office hours. And uh, XJM tells this really good origin story of how they moved from uh, contrib into core development. And it's, um, it's recorded in the DrupalCon Portland um, uh, uh, contribution sprint talk. And it's a really good talk, so if you're into this, you can listen to that one too. Um, it started with only triaging issues though. So there was no expectation at the beginning that people would be like solving architectural problems and submitting like patches and like committing things. Like it wasn't like that. It had very um, limited scope in the beginning. It was just like, hey, let's have these hours on IRC. We'll help people like find an issue. They can triage it. Like they can try and reproduce it and add steps to reproduce or correct, correct things that are um, missing from the issue summary. So it had limited bits in the beginning. Uh, and then after that started was the first like 
official Drupal mentoring event. It was in person, happened to be in Denver, which I went to. And I am sitting at the table in the most back left corner uh, in this giant sprint room. So these are rounds in a big conference room and it's filled with people and you can't even see me. And it, the picture was taken so long ago, the resolution is terrible, you can't even zoom in and find it. But I had, um, even though this was my first sprint thing, um, and I was not an official mentor, I was just like showing up for this thing. I had um, gathered a bunch of people together who were having the same problem as I was, and we worked on the day to like solve it and then document our solution. And, um, and after we did that, we decided that um, it wasn't really something that wrong that we were doing. It was more like if the documentation was better, then we wouldn't have had the problem in the first place if we had set things up correctly. So uh, I ended up writing a patch to the documentation and I was about to, um, I had made the changes to the documentation, I was about to make the patch, and I was like, oh, you know, we're at an event and there's a bunch of people doing this. I'm like, I wonder if other people want to know how to make a patch and submit it in the issue queue. So I asked um, the people who were running the event, it was like Andrea and uh, XJAM and Tim Plunkett, and I was like, can I use your projector and show people how to make a patch? And they were like, sure. <sighs> I was crazy. Uh, so at this big event, we had uh, sometimes things like that, like big presentations, um, but we also had more um, like intimate uh, discussions like with experienced contributors and new contributors uh, working together. So there's official mentoring things like these IRC office hours and then these events at, um, at DrupalCons and camps. Uh, and since like, 2011, and even before that, right? There were already seeds of this idea in the community. These things have grown and grown and like leaked into other areas and infected them, even though they're not officially mentoring events. Uh, and those are like the issue queues, um, the chat that we use in general, and other events where there's nothing on the schedule that says mentoring, but mentoring is creeping in. So what happens during these things? So I mentioned these IRC office hours. Um, the important thing about them is they are scheduled, they're dedicated time, there's always an experienced mentor there, um, they are once a week, and right now we have them both for new contributors, and then we also have them for criticals. So um, the criteria for switching from like the new contributor mentoring office hours to the critical mentoring office hours is essentially that you have done anything. <laughs> So like if you know how to make a patch and you know how to like change status on an issue and update an issue summary and you like know what that process is, then we're like, okay, let's get you to work on the criticals because we need Drupal 8 release, please. Um, so we have uh, both of those things. Um, at these office hours, uh, yeah. Are those at the same time or at a different time? They're different times, yeah. And in fact, the criticals are, um, they're uh, at three different times on Friday depending upon like where you are in the globe, uh, whereas the new mentoring ones are on uh, Wednesday. If you're in the US, it's like Wednesday morning, and if you're in Europe, it's uh, Wednesday evening. Um, so what happens then is people show up and they're like, hey, I'm new, I wanna help, and mentors uh, help them find issues to work on. They talk to them and figure out like what their interests are. Either they wanna do something they're already good at, or they wanna learn something new but whatever, mentors will help you find something. Um, mentors help people figure out how do you even work on an issue. So you find a problem, maybe you care about or it's dealing with a technology you wanna learn and you're, you read the thing and you're like, great, I have no idea what there is to do next. Like mentors help figure out what the next step in the process is. Uh, they can also help with technical questions about um, whatever's trying to be fixed. Um, they provide encouragement a uh, very strong encouragement that after you've uh, worked on an issue for a while that you need to make a comment on the issue either with questions that you now have or the result of your work. And the result of your work could be um, updating the issue summary or adding screenshots or doing a review of the code. Uh, we have a really broad definition of what work on an issue is and it's one of the things I'm really proud of. Uh, but it all ends with a comment on the issue because if you don't comment on the issue, it didn't happen. Uh, people are 
often extremely hesitant to do that because it could be the first time they've ever used their Drupal account to write something that other people will read. And so mentors are really helpful for encouraging them to do that in a nice way. Uh, something else that can happen uh, at these mentoring events, uh, like in uh, office hours, is uh, let's say somebody, I don't know, um, let's say somebody does some screenshots of a UI change and they post them on the issue. Uh, they can then comment in the chat and say, hey, I posted those things on the issue. And the mentor can immediately give them feedback saying, oh, that's great. I'm glad you posted those on an issue. Uh, now, what, in order for them to be noticed, what we need you to do is embed them into the issue summary. So like whatever the contributor task thing was that this person was trying to do, when they tell a mentor that they've done it, that mentor can give them immediate feedback on it and, uh, and help make sure that the next time they do that same thing, that they're more efficient at it or they do it better or that it ends up being more beneficial. So that feedback is really nice. Um, the other thing that's nice about trying to contribute during these office hours is that a new contributor feels supported during it. They see names that they recognize from the Drupal project talking to them and helping them do something. And that makes them feel really valued, that this other person is investing their time in them. Um, because it's in the same chat channel, that is a generic one that uh, lots of people are in all the time. Uh, we also get the opportunity to overhear a lot of conversations. So new contributors might join this channel specifically to get involved with helping Drupal, but they end up joining the channel and kind of hanging out a while, so then they see broader ranges of conversations that are happening in the community. That's really good for those new contributors. Um, other people that have been involved with the Drupal community for a while, maybe they use it for their work, they're already in this channel hanging out, and then all of a sudden, like, mentoring descends on their IRT channel. And um, that's really good for them, even though it might be slightly annoying, because they get exposure to see how mentoring happens, and they get to see how you work on fixing uh, core issues. And that um, makes those people that have maybe been around a while also less afraid to get involved. So the overhearing of conversations is really important. So the, <clears throat> that's what happens in IRC office hours. It, we have these other official mentoring things uh, at events. And it turns out um, exactly those same things happen in person. <laughs> we help people find issues, explain procedure, maybe advise on technical things. Um, make them post a comment on the issue, give them some quick feedback on it. Like, it's all the same thing, only it's just more intense. You get a better connection with the people that you're dealing with. Um, you literally get to watch other people work. And I work by myself from home. So sitting next to somebody else and watching them type on the computer is actually really exciting for me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, what was that tool? And what key sequence did you use for that? And where was that menu thing? Like, what the? So that's really good. And um, yeah, there aren't a lot of people who are like live coding YouTube channels yet. So, uh, so at events, um, that's something that's really nice that you can get. You get even more overhearing uh, in person. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sometimes people will say things in person that they won't say when there's a rec re written uh, record of it. Uh, and uh, you'll also end up hearing other people. So there's overhearing, which is really good. Um, something that's kind of special that we do at the big uh, events is we have a live commit um, where we, um, at a sprint, we will have been working all day long um, experienced people, mentors, new people, all working all day long, and we take like a break. Everybody stops, and we all gather together in one place in front of a stage. And then one of the committers uh, will do a live commit on stage, and they'll review the, uh, the code change, they'll look through the issue, they'll explain their process, and then they commit it live right there. And it's super exciting. It really is. Um, but what's really cool about this is they don't pick the most like complicated architectural patch that like famous so-and-so has been working on for eight months and has finally finished that day. No, what they do is they pick an issue 
that a new contributor has worked on. And that's the celebration of the end of the day. And it's um, a really good like, demonstration of the value of new people involved. When you get everybody together and they do this celebration. And one of the things that I've seen change over the years as we've been doing this live commit is now, not only is the committer up on stage, um, but all of the people who are there that worked on the issue are up there also. And that can lead to quite a few people um, because you've got the person who updated the issue summary, the person who did the change record, the person who did the screenshots, uh, somebody fixed a documentation issue, somebody else wrote a test, uh, and then you have the mentors that were involved with helping those people do it. And a lot of times the new person who may have um, written the test for the issue, um, when it got reviewed, uh, somebody would have said like, oh, this needs to change like this. What we do then is we don't have that person go back and change that test. We have them look for somebody else who's new in the room and have them show somebody else how to change the test that they just wrote. So as much as possible, we try and get people immediately out of the like, I'm new and I don't know what to do, to I'm gonna help somebody else new know what to do. And this leads to like a lot of people standing up on stage and a lot of these people are making their first comments on core issues that day and it's super exciting. So we have these official things, <coughs> the office hours and, um, thing, and events at in-person events. Um, and some of the, I don't know, patterns of behavior and attitudes that we develop because of this leak into other areas of the project, like our issue queues, um, the general chat channels that we have, and non-mentor specific events. So issues, I mentioned before, one of the things mentors do is get people to comment. Issues are our canonical resource of all things. And anything we work on really needs to get documented on an issue. Um, so we take conversations that we have in person or in chat and we like summarize them and put them on the issue. Um, some of the approaches that we use for like uh, giving people constructive feedback or showing them um, the next step that they need to do. When we do those things in person, those have started to happen more and more often on the issues. Um, and that really helps people who can't come to events still kind of benefit from that idea. Um, and these issues are a record of our community's behavior patterns. So the more we have these good patterns of behavior, demonstrated on issues, the more people who are gonna think about getting involved with a project are gonna see how we treat each other and be like, yeah, I wanna be involved with a project that where somebody is showing somebody else how to do something and thanking them for what they did. Um, so we have the office hours, certain hours in the chat, and we have all this overhearing of hap that happens of like people who are regularly lurking there. And what happens is they start to maybe subconsciously absorb some of the patterns of behavior that mentors are exhibiting in that channel during those certain hours, which can also lead to improved behavior in the chat in general. So this spreading of the culture of mentoring um, comes from some really important parts of it, that we do it in public, that it's the same place where experienced contributors are also interacting. And the whole moving from a new contributor to a new contributor who's helping another contributor to becoming a mentor, to being a mentor who's documenting mentoring processes for other new mentors, like that whole thing actually provides like some kind of career path where you don't end up being bored because you're like, the only thing you know as a new contributor is how to reroll issues. Like you know the next step forward and there's somebody there to help you take that next step forward so you can always kind of be challenged both technically and with your personal skills and leadership things. Like there's a nice path forward. All right, so <clears throat> let's see. 
So that's kind of like when it happens and the effect of it. Um, but what do mentors actually do? So uh, not only do we talk to people directly, but we also um, work to change the tools to make it easier for new contributors to get involved. Uh, we work to change the community to making it more welcome. Uh, we encourage people to maybe change their language or uh, add some structure or policy or document things. Um, we have direct interaction with new contributors to help them be effective with their time. Uh, we also have direct interaction with new contributors technically to help them find solutions. Um, we have a general um, attitude that our goal is not to tell people the answers to their questions, but to help them know how they can find the answers to their questions. And as part of doing that, um, we have a, uh, a specific pattern of giving constructive feedback, uh, where um, we look at what somebody's done, and we thank them for what they did. We look at what they did and try and identify one part of it that they, we want them to do again in that way, and we tell them what that was. And then we tell them what the next step is in order to move forward in that thing, and we give them a link or some kind of documentation so that they know how to do that next step. Either an example of another issue where it had happened or an actual documentation page that, we, that we've written. Okay, so some of the central ideas that lead to successful mentoring is an attitude when you come to mentoring that you have blocked this time off your calendar not to get anything done yourself at all, <laughs> but only to help other people succeed and be awesome. Um, so, like, at in-person events, at big events, we have a sprint day, and these mentors will sign up and spend the whole day helping other people do things. Uh, what makes that slightly more palatable for them is not only, like, all the intrinsic benefits and the fun and the meeting people and the growth that happens when you do that, but we also have other extra sprint days that don't have any official mentoring events where the mentors can get some stuff done themselves. Um, so you definitely need both as a mentor. Um, but, we, but when we're mentoring, we have an attitude that our job is to help these other people like find the greatness in them. Um, we keep in mind that when we meet somebody for the first time and they say they're a new contributor or they don't know how to help, that doesn't mean that they don't know things. They use Drupal already, either on a side project for volunteer or as part of their job. They have some kind of expertise. They just don't have expertise in contributing. So mentors ha uh, have this uh, idea, or they get reminded uh, when they read how to be a mentor documentation or they come to orientation, that when you're talking to somebody new, you should assume that they are good at what they do. They just don't know how to contribute yet. Um, this, uh, this is really good for um, having an attitude of respect for new people. Um, mentors also have a respect for new people because they see that new people are the only people who have the perspective of the new person. And that's a valuable thing because all the rest of us are all like jaded and old and blind to all these things that new people can see. So not only do we recognize that they have expertise, but they also have something special because they're new that we can't get. Um, so we approach each of these interactions with new people uh, as an investment, uh, but with realistic expectations. So like, for example, uh, we might help 100 new people do something on an issue, maybe you know, at an event. Of those 100 people, we may only get 10 people who ever do anything again. Like, that was their only contribution, 90 people. But 10 people might come back. They might do something like a second time or maybe up to 10 times over the next year. Um, but we look at it as an investment, but with realistic expectations. Of those 10 people that might come back and do something again, one of those people might go on to like, do something truly amazing. And that makes the investment totally worthwhile. You might think that it's frustrating for mentors to have you know, all of these interactions where you're like, oh my god, it's fruitless. Like This person's never going to come back. But 
even in those cases, mentors still get something out of the interaction. Um, oftentimes, the mentors are learning something new themselves. So it's at least interesting. Uh, because as a mentor, I might help somebody work on, oh, man, like CSS changes. Um, I don't know a lot about CSS. But when I work with somebody and we go through an issue, I learn more about that. So it's beneficial to me no matter what that person goes on to do. But there's also this chance that they might go on to become the next maintainer of Bartik or something. So like, it's a really good investment uh, either way. Because mentors have a lot of interactions with new contributors, and a lot of first-time contributors, right? Because we keep getting first-time contributors. We experience first-time contributor pain over and over and over again. So it's like we feel it ourselves. Uh, so we're highly motivated to improve our tools and also to um, expose cultural secret information and document it somewhere where people can have access to it. Uh, so we make a lot of contributor task documents, which are like, uh, these are things that you have to do on issues. Here's how to do them. Uh, this makes it easier for mentors to uh, talk to new contributors because you can be like, okay, you need to add a test to this issue. Here's the documentation page on how to add a test. That's great for the mentor and also for the new contributor because the new contributor can rely and trust that information because it's documented. And if some other experienced person found out that I was telling somebody wrong how to add a test, and I'm, and I'm like, oh, you know what, that's what, this that's what this test page says, then we fix the page. We don't have to have an argument about like, whether or not my approach to add a test is the right one. It gives like a canonical source, which makes it more convenient for the mentors, the new people, and gives us a place to focus and document best practices. So contributor task documents are something really useful that has grown over these three years that we've had the mentor program. And the same thing happens when we deal with mentors. So we get, uh, like I mentioned at LA, we had uh, like 60 mentors there. I would wager that we had maybe 15 of them had ever mentored at an event before. So most of them were mentoring for the first time at an event. But they were supported because they knew there were experienced people there. They could ask questions like in the moment. But also we had documentation for them so they knew what to expect on the day. They could read it ahead of time. We sent them email. We prepped for them. We had an orientation boff at the event where we went through things and we like disseminated like tips and tricks. But they were all also documented. Because we've got the contributor task things documented and we've got the mentor task things documented and we're improving the tools so that we don't need to like explain these weird procedural things all the time, this gives an opportunity for experienced contributors and mentors to actually stop doing that because it's easier for new people to get involved. And this is a healthy, freeing thing. Um, it gives experienced people the knowledge that everything is not going to crumble to the ground if they stop for a year or a week because we've documented all these things and there's a structure in place to handle it. Um, that is also um, reflected in other areas of the project. We have a um, update to the Drupal uh, core governance documentation where we um, list all the maintainers for the project and we've added a new thing there, which is provisional maintainer. And this provisional maintainer is nice because it not only recognizes people who are already doing the work of a maintainer, but maybe not officially named as a maintainer, um, but it makes it transparent and obvious to the current maintainer that we expect that they will eventually not be the maintainer and that there are people to step into that role and that we've planned for that. And that's a really healthy thing. So Drupal 7 um, had 950 people with um, core commit mentions involved with it. Drupal 8 so far has about 3,000. Um, we are really, really good at getting new people involved to the level where we can measure their effect. 
And this is only measuring the old way that we measure commit mentions, which is mostly from code contributions. So these 3,000 people are not recognizing all of the other work that gets done on an issue. So we have even more new contributors than this. One of the things that um, I can currently see uh, happening right now is that um, our commit mentions are becoming much more common for people who do code reviews, uh, design work on issues, uh, significant uh, managing of the issue in terms of like issue summary and procedure and stuff like that. So we're, we're gonna have additional documentation of even more people involved with the project. Some of the reasons that we went from 1,000 to 3,000 contributors in Drupal 8 is because the IRC office hours were at predictable times the mentoring concepts spread through other interactions, not just designated times. And this happened because we did it in public. The attitude of mentors of helping other people succeed, of mentors not answering people's questions, but instead showing them how they can find out the answers. Scaling mentoring and turning other people into new mentors Improving our contributor process so we can skip some of this mentoring stuff that we had to do. And documenting lots of things so that people are replaceable. These have all led to like the success of the mentoring in Drupal. Uh, so I mentioned we're into documenting. Uh, so uh, instead of putting links in, interspersed in the slides, I collected them all here at the end. Uh, and you can, um, you only have to remember one URL, which is bit.ly slash integrate dash mentoring. And then you can look up the rest of these and you can actually click on them and they're full on links and everything. Um, so uh, we've got seven minutes left for questions. Thank you for coming very much.